Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about renal tubular acidosis. I know you were tempted to skip this video, and I'm really proud of you for watching it anyway because you don't really like to talk about RTA. But after today, you might not mind it so much. It's pretty simple once you get into it. So let's break it down into the words. Renal tubular is referring to the renal tubules. This is where we make urine. And acidosis is referring to the blood. So we're talking about a low pH in the blood, which means that we've got an excess of hydrogen ions, or we don't have enough bicarb. So if we're having a hard time getting hydrogen ions into the urine, then that's going to cause our pH to go up because we're not getting as rid we're not getting rid of as many hydrogen ions. And that's what we call type 1 renal tubular acidosis. We also call that uh, distal renal tubular acidosis because it happens in the distal tubules. If we're having a hard time getting HCO3 or bicarb back into the body from the urine, so we're having a pr problem with reabsorption of bicarb, then this is called type 2 RTA or we also call it proximal RTA. There's also a redheaded stepchild of the renal tubular acidosis, and that's type 4. Type 4 is a problem with aldosteronism, which isn't a problem in the renal tubulars, tubules, so I'm not sure why we call it renal tubular, and it's not always uh, going to cause acidosis. So it might not be in the renal tubules or acidosis, but we're going to call it renal tubular acidosis anyway. We won't go too much into the mechanisms there, but we'll talk about each of these in just a second. One more note on this is type 1 and type 2 renal tubular acidosis are associated with low potassium, hypokalemia. And we just need to remember that throughout this whole thing, that type 1 and type 2 are going to be a problem with, uh, with keeping enough potassium in the blood. So type 1, what are the causes? Hereditary cirrhosis, um, or hereditary causes, cirrhosis, nephrocalcinosis, autoimmune disease like Sjogren's or, uh, or lupus, hypercalciuria, which is related to nephrocalcinosis, uh, sickle cell disease, and uh, drugs like lithium and amphotericin. So the main ones there, cirrhosis, hypercalciuria, autoimmune disease, and drugs. Type 2 can also be hereditary, and uh, the one thing that you want to associate with this is Fanconi syndrome. Well, what's Fanconi syndrome? It's not Fanconi's anemia. Let's keep these two terms straight. Fanconi, Guido Fanconi, is who it's named after, and Fanconi syndrome is a disease of the proximal tubules. So it's, it's really any dysfunction of the proximal tubules, which is, remember, where we said type 2 um, occurs is in the proximal tubules. And uh, it turns out actually Fanconi didn't really discover this, so uh, we don't really uh, need to call it Fanconi syndrome anymore, but we still do anyway. Other causes, drugs like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and amyloidosis problems like multiple myeloma, heavy metal, heavy metal poisoning, and vitamin D deficiency. And then type 4, remember, is a problem with aldosterone. So this is usually going to be an adrenal issue, uh, like in primary hypoaldosteronism, or it could be a hyporenanemic cause where we're not making enough renin to uh, stimulate aldosterone production, which could be a problem with kidney disease or drugs like ACE inhibitors, NSAIDs, uh, amyloride, spironolactone, and heparin. Spironolactone we can figure out pretty easy, right? Because that's a direct aldosterone inhibitor. Um, and then there's also pseudo-hypoaldosteronism. So how are these patients going to present? The symptoms are pretty nonspecific, like headache, nausea, vomiting. They're just going to come in sick. So, um, but the... Uh, Things that you'll watch out for, like Kussmaul breathing, which we usually associate with DKA, uh, but this, these are just really deep breaths, 
And then all the symptoms of hypokalemia we'll see in type 1 and type 2. Uh, renal stones uh, we see more often in type 1. And bone demineralization is more in type 2, but you see it in type 1 as well. So this is like rickets and osteomalacia you'll see with uh, chronic, chronic renal tubular acidosis. How do we differentiate between these different types? Well, the two main tests that are going to tell us the difference between these are blood potassium and urine pH. Those are the biggest tests anyway. Uh, of course, you're going to get an arterial blood gas to help you figure out that they have acidosis in the first place. But once you figure that out, then let's look at the potassium because um, potassium is going to be low in type 1 and type 2. And potassium is going to be high in type 4 renal tubular acidosis. So once we figured out that uh, we have, let's say we have low potassium, then how do we figure out it's, if it's type 1 or type 2? Then we're going to look at the urine pH. The urine pH is going to be high in type 1. And why is that? Because we're not getting a lot of protons into the urine, so it gives us a high pH. Uh, the fact that type 2 has a normal to and then later low pH, uh, I don't know how to explain, but let's just focus on the hydrogens. So type 1 is a problem with hydrogens, and you can't get it into the urine. It gives you a high pH. And then type 2 and type 4, you may have a normal pH or a low pH. How do we treat it? Well, type 1 and type 2, our biggest concern is the potassium. So we give potassium citrate, and of course we're going to give fluids. Type 4, we give fludrocortisone, which is a mineral mineralocorticoid like aldosterone. And uh, then we also give loop diuretics. So this is the main overview. Type 1 is distal, and it's a hydrogen problem. It might be hereditary, might come from cirrhosis. Uh, remember nephrocalcinosis, it could be a cause or an effect. Autoimmune problems and drugs. Type 2, it's proximal and it's a problem with reabsorption of bicarb. Could be Fanconi syndrome or drugs um, or amyloidosis. And type 4 is a problem with uh, adrenal glands, usually hypoaldosteronism, or kidney disease, or drugs as well. Remember on diagnosis, hypokalemia means type 1 or 2, and then once you get from there, a higher pH in a hypokalemic uh, acidotic patient is going to be suggestive of type 1. Treat it with potassium citrate if it's type 1 or type 2 and fludrocortisone and loop diuretics if it's type 4. All right, thanks to those who contributed uh, images, Inky2010 and Ziev Alexandrovich Wicks. And uh, if you want to be involved um, and help the cause, you can comment, you can share the video, or you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. Thanks.